everyone. Good afternoon. Good morning. Wherever you are joining us from, you are welcome to our quad four budget participation class today. And I'm happy to have all of you on board. Kindly drop your name and place you are joining us from on the group chat. Wow, uh, so I'm seeing exciting people today. Listen, Miss Samson from Lagos. You are welcome. You are welcome. Uh, my name is David Yakoji. I'll be anchoring this session today and also be teaching you some, uh, some special skills on Power BI and how you can create a, a good visualization using Power BI tools and also how you can apply different skills to create a good report with Power BI. So and I'm very sure that at the end of today's lesson, you are going to have an exciting moment and also we are going to be very proud of what you can do after today's session. So Julian Somoni from Lagos, we are welcome. Welcome, good to have you here. So I'm still waiting for the other people on the call to drop where they are joining us from and their name. You are all welcome. So in a moment, I'll be sharing my screen and walk you through the agenda of our today's session. All right, good evening once again, good afternoon, good morning for wherever you are joining us from. So today is going to be a, one of the exciting moments you are all be waiting for and anticipated for. So during the last class uh, with uh, one of our co-facilitators on this section, we have been taught and walked through step by step on how to work with Power BI and what are the basic skills that is required to be a Power BI developer. And also how is the Power BI is very important to be for people that are aspiring to be data analysts and also business intelligence experts. But today, we do we have a little time today, but I will be going into practical aspect of Power BI with us today. So, in today's uh, lesson, what we are going to be learning today is Power BI implementation route. So this uh, feature you are seeing on your screen is talking to what are the different implementation routes that we have in Power BI. So we have several Power BI implementation, which some people call pillars of Power BI. So we are going to be working from extraction, which is one of the first pillars of Power BI, then we are going to be going into transformation of the data, modeling of the data, calculation, visualization, distribution, and automation. So what is extraction? So when we are talking about extraction is Power BI. So this is talking to the steps where we get data from a, from a, a, data, uh, from a data source. So you can get data from different data source. You can get from ERP database. SQA database, you can get data from Azure, CSV, SharePoint, and also you can get data from any website or script data from any different places. So the process of getting data first, when you want to analyze the data, getting your data, that's what you call extraction. So wherever you are getting your data from, wherever you are plugging your data from, that is where we are calling the extraction, which is the first steps of Power BI implementation roadmap. So the second thing that we are going to be learning today is transformation. 
So transformation is talking about when you pick your data, when you extract your data, you transform it into what you actually need. So that's what is called transformation. Let me quickly so that I can see my screen. All right. So all right, so I can see some people who are just joining. You can drop your name, location where you are joining us from. So today is going to be one of the exciting moments for every one of us who are on this call. So as I'm saying, so transformation is talking about immediately you pick your data, you extract your data from your Excel, Excel data, Excel database, or from your CSV, or from any of your SQL database. Maybe you pick your data to what you think it's supposed to be. Maybe you split, uh, you split it into column or row. So transforming the data, cleaning the data, shaping the data into a proper format. Uh, we normally use this procedure in Power Query. That's what is called transformation. So when you transform data, the next thing you need to do is to do data modeling. So data modeling is speaking to, maybe you have your data, you try to create relationship between different tables of your data. So that is what we call data modeling. When you are trying to create relationship between your data, let's give an example. In a supermarket, whereby we have people that are in, at the point of sale, we have people that are at the point of manufacturing, while we have people as part of logistics. So how the three database synchronize how they are in a, how they are communicating, which is means which means relationship. That's what we call modeling. And then for modeling today, we are going to be going into calculation. Calculation is talking about by the time you are now trying to calculate, okay, I want to see total sum of sales. You write your formula. Then you have a figure that shows total sum of sales. Okay, I want to see average sales per day. By the time you get your answer for that, then you have already started calculation. So that is aspect of calculation. Then we are talking about visualization stage. We speak to, I mean, okay. Let me use a pointer so that, okay. So when we are talking about visualization, this is when you begin to create a visual in your report. This is when you begin to plot your bar chart, trend to show different different insights. That's when we are in visualization stage. So the sixth stage of Power BI roadmap is distribution. This is speaking to when you want to share your data for the end user, for people to consume your data, to look at what you have done, what you have produced. So this is when we are, when we publish it, so this actually occur most frequently, most all the time, it's happen it's on the Power BI service. So this is being done on Power BI service. It gives you opportunity to distribute what you produce on your own, on your own, uh, on your own laptop or PC. Then you want to share with people outside the country, anywhere to your business leads, your business manager. So distribution is, is the sixth aspect of Power BI roadmap. So the last thing that we need to be learned on this uh, on this call today is automation how you can automate your work like you already connected your data to your to your, to your database so immediately you, you download the data from 2020 uh, from 2000 to 2000 let's say you download data from 2000 to 2001 so now we are now in year 2022 so you don't need to go back to your power bi and click to refresh again let the power bi be taking the data for you and your pro updating it by itself every day every second based on your schedule so that's what we call automation. So Power BI will now be doing the automation for you. So now we can see that Power BI starts from extraction, transformation, modeling, calculation, visualization, and distribution. So at the end of today's class, we are going to be building this exciting dashboard that we are seeing here. So we are going to be building this dashboard. In uh, impact sales dashboard is what we are all going to be building. So I want to see somebody that is very exciting on this course to send any emoji of your, of your choice. So if you are anticipating to know how to how to build the dashboard, if you want to know how to build the dashboard, give me one emoji of your choice. Let me see it on the chat. So you are going to be building this dashboard. So I'm okay. I can see some fire emoji out there. That's very good. I can see the spirit. That is the spirit. That is the spirit. All right. All right. Wow. 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 I can see that. Wow. Benjamin Bella from Nairobi. Okay, yeah, wow, you are welcome, you are welcome, you are welcome, you are welcome. You are welcome. Okay, Joseph from Lagos, Elijah, I can see you are, you are all welcome. So this is the second page of the dashboard that we are going to be building today. We are going to be building this. So this session is being recorded. So you might not be able to practice as long as I'm doing it, but I'm going to assure all of you that you are going to get a pre-recorded video of this so that you can practice 
uh, at your own pace. So this is another aspect of the dashboard that you are going to be building. So we are not going to be diving into the analysis properly. So I share the link to the data set and all the material for this uh, lesson today. I've shared it to, our, to the people who are on the course class or the Google Classroom. I'm very sure if you are in the course classroom, you have gotten the access to this data that's being used here. So this is the Google modeling field of the data that we are going to be using today. Okay, so let me dive into the analysis proper. So I will be showing us how we can, let me share the link to the data set for people that are not on the course class so that you can all have access to it. So today's data, this is data we are going to be using today. We have uh, we have a data from the web revenue data that's, that was extracted from three from five locations. So this is the data. So for some people that is asking me about data, let me show you where we have the data sets. Okay. So this the, the we have the data set on this global on this global drive. This is where we have the data set. So I will share the link to this data set shortly so that we all can have access to it. So you can download the data. We have a revenue database, and also we have the uh, another data that we are going to be using to support the report. So I will share the link to this data shortly. Let me move this here so that we all can have access to it. All right. So, so let me share, I will share the link so that everybody on the call can all have access to it. So, okay, let me load this data on here. One of our facilitators, you are taught how to connect data to a said database. But today, I'll be teaching us two things: how you can connect data to online, uh, how you can connect your data to Google Google Sheets directly to be picking live data, and also how you can connect to online to web service. So that's one of this is one of the unique things that we are going to be learning today. Okay. So we have this data on the, uh, being domiciled on the on the Google Drive from our from our from our partner. So this data set was shared with with a BI uh, BI consulting firm, making a request that. David, we have a revenue database and product, product registration database. I want to have insight about our sales, want to know how we are trending, how we are performing. So one of the first things that we need to do as an analyst is that we need to look at where is our data set is coming from. So we can see that the data set source is being found on the Google, Google Drive. So one of the first things that we need to do now is that we need to connect to this Google Drive. So first thing you need to do when you are connected to your Google Drive is that you need to click on this share. When you click on this share, then you click on copy link, this copy, you copy this link and click OK. But before that, let me open my Power BI window so that we can all start, uh, we can all have the insight all along together. So my Power BI is loading. 
So let me open my notepad so that we can all see this. Uh, okay. Okay, my Power BI build has open. So one of the things I need to do is that I want to connect my Google Drive so that I can have access to the data and then load it to my Power BI. So well, first of all, what you need to do is to come to transform. So when you open your Power BI, you come to transform. When you, so this is transform, click transform data. So another window we open, which is speaking to, if you remember when we, had, when we, when we started this session, I told you about extraction so extraction extraction of data is speaking to our data source is in the part is in google drive that is our data source where, where we are doing extraction from so transforming of the data is what we you want it will now be the next thing that we need to do but before we do that transform we need to connect to our data source which is i'm going to use web so i'm connecting to the web so that i can get the data so now if you remember just now i click share when you want to connect to the google drive so you click share on the on that particular data and you click copy you copy this link so when you copy this link what you need to do is this open your notepad so paste that particular link so what you need to do you see this uh this edit usb and sharing you need to change what is here so in this edit you change this edit to exports exports you change it to exports then you change your your you uh, the file type to so you change x this one to xlx s xlx you change this to xlx then you change this one to format you change this to format so when you are done with this just copy the whole link then go to your power bi again Then go to your Power BI query editor, then paste this, then click connect. So I think we spend 19 minutes. So I'm going to be fast a bit so that we can finish what we have as an objective. So what we have done now, we are still working on extraction. So the process of extraction is what we are now. If you remember vividly, the table we are working with, it has seven, uh, five different sheets. So this five different sheet is fit from location A, location B, location C, location D, location E. And uh, each of these locations have the same heading. So you need to note that the, all of them have the same heading. So that means we are going to do some transformation on the data, which is one of the things that we need to do after we are done with extraction. So I'm going to select all the, all the five locations. Then I will click OK. So I can see that all the five locations have been imported into the into the database here. So the next thing I need to do, the next thing I need to do now is that let me go and import my other data. So I want to I want to connect to product registration as well. So what I need to do, I will click on share again. I will copy this link, the link that the link that I have the details of the data. Then I'll come back to your to your notepad. Edit this play. Uh, word again. After, as I've said earlier on, you change edit, you change it to export. Make sure that your spelling is correct so that you won't have issue. You change your changes all to format. You change sharing, you change it to XLX. So what this means is that you change sharing means that you are, you are using Google format to share your data. But when you are using format as XLX, you are converting the online web, online source into uh, Excel format. That's what you are doing here. So what you need to do, copy it again, go back to your Power BI, go back to your Power BI file again, go to new source, go to find, look for web, then click on web, then you see for web again, paste this here. When you have, when you've pasted this, click on OK. It will connect to the Power BI, uh, it will Probably you connect to the Google for Google the, the Google Drive that we have the data. You can see it here. You see this is the data that we are looking at on the Google just now. So what you need to do now, click here. If you didn't select this thing, uh, checklist it, it will not work. So immediately I'm done with that. 
I will click OK. So you see that this has load here. So what we have done now is extraction. We've extracted the data from the Google Drive where our data domicile into the Power BI. So we have completed one of the, so one of these, uh, what is it called? So if you remember, if you remember what we said earlier on, one thing we've, we are able to do now is this. We are able to, So we are able to complete extraction. So taking the data from the current source into the Power BI first, that is extraction. So now our this young guy here, the Vicenna here, we now ride from extraction into transformation. So we are let drive, let drive into transformation. I hope all of you are with me and are driving along with me. So now we are going to transformation. So now welcome back to transformation. So first of all, what we need to do is that let's look at the progress registration. So what do we have on program registration? So let me introduce that we are on this call. This is our second class, and we have been introduced to different ribbon that we have on the Power BI Power Query. And we are familiar with, and we assume we are familiar with different aspects of uh, what is new source, what is recent source, what is metadata, data, what is data source setting. I'm very sure that you are all familiar with that. So I will not be emphasizing much on that. We are on practical use case today. So now we are in product registration. Let me look at my product registration. This is my product ID. ID is not it's supposed to be a number. I will change this to test. So now what I'm doing now is that I'm changing the data from uh, data type. So this is my product group. This is my product uh, product line. Okay, the data format that we have here is correct. Okay, another thing you can see looking to here is that you check your, you, if you look at this place, there is an error that is empty. We have empty of 33% and valid of 67%. So this shows that there is some issue with my data. This shows that my data has some no. So I will uncheck this. Uh -huh. You can now see that my valid data is now 100%. So that's one of the transformations that you need to do when you are working with your data. You remove more, you change your data type, and then if there is a column that is redundant that you are not going to be used, you remove it from your analysis. So now, we are done with product registration. So if you want to rename this, if you want to rename this, you can just, okay, sorry, I'm just replying to a test. So now, we we are now moving to the other code. This way you are going to do some transformation. So I'm very sure you are all excited. Look at this data that we have here. We have this data having, we have this data having on, 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 on web format header. So this header is not correct. You see, we are having here no, we are having different things. So what you need to do is that come to remove remove rule here. Want to remove what how many rows do you want to remove? Want to remove one, two, want to remove about two rows. So remove top row so that we need to format this. Let me click two here, type two. You see now, say we remove the top row. You can see that the data is now having the right heading. So now, but at the top here, we have revenue, pull on, pull on, pull on. The heading is as the column row one here. So what we need to do now is that we need to transform, we go to transform heading here. Then you click use first row as header. So now we transfer, you can see that this data is now formatted on this location A. The location A data is now well formatted. So what we need to do now is that we go to the location B as well. We repeat the same thing that was done on that particular uh, location A, which is removing the top row here, which is, so we are going to remove it so that the data will all be clean. Then we make, go to transform, and then make this one the, the header. I hope we are all following. So I uh, will take question after the after we are done with this, so that I can carry everybody along. So let me check if you have any. So how do you get those files again? Well, let me see the table. Okay, okay. If you want to get file zero and MCM, the way you do it is that go to view. So I'm speaking to Samsung. Samsung, what you need to do? Go to view. You see all this data preview, you checklist them. You see, column distribution, you see, if you checklist it, column provide, you see. 
show you see now is the column quality. You see, so you need to checklist all of them that we have here so that you can have. So this one, what, 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 what we have here, it gives you summary of your data on a glance. So in, when you are doing machine learning or you are working with artificial intelligence, we normally run some model whereby we talk about uh, data exploratory. So this part of the data exploratory procedure, it gives you what is the one money, how many of your data is valid, how many do you have, how many MC do you have. So now, so not to digress, so let me continue with the data planning we are doing here. So now we have this as a heading already. So let's check our data type. Okay, before we check our data type, let's let's look at the color location C. So at the location C, let's remove the top row, remove the top row by two. Okay, so then go to transform, then remove this. So we have this as well. So we check. So let's go to location D as well. So you do it for your, all your data sets. So remove the top row. So let me remove by two. Then you go to transform, use first row as a header. Then you go to E, which is the final one that we are working with. You go to transform. So okay, before you go to transform, go to remove colon. Remove, remove this. So most, in most of that analysis work, we are working with Power BI. We spend so much time cleaning our data. That is one of the things that you need to know. You, you need to spend so much time in cleaning your data. So because if your data is not clean, it's not in a proper format, which is transformation that we are talking, we are speaking to, there is nothing you can do with your analysis. Your analysis will be faulty and will be useful to you. So now, now that we are done with this, you can see that, so what we need to do now is that, we are going to match these five locations together as one. So now I will click on location, then I will go to my home, well, from your home page, go to append, append query. So I will append query as name. So we have more than two, three tables. So I will click three or more tables. You see now we have a location here. So I'm appending location here to location E. So I'm selecting B, C, D, E. So I will click hard, I will click OK. So now we can see that location here, all of them has matched together. If you check your error, you see that there is no error. So now, now that I've matched it, I can call this revenue, uh, revenue data. I can call this my revenue, revenue table. I can call this as my revenue table. Why I call this as my registration Okay, my products, products, product table. So I'll call this my product table. Okay, so the next thing now that we need to do now is to, is to now, so I don't want the data of location here, B, C, D. I don't want this data, I don't want it to follow me into my analysis. Okay, somebody is asking, can Power BI be installed on Linux? Yeah, there is a way you can install Power BI there, but uh, let me, but we maybe uh, we are going to have another video tutorial class for that so that you can, you can do a walkthrough of how you can do that so that you won't be having issues with it. Let me leave this one as product registration. And let me leave this as revenue so that I won't be writing too much measure. Yeah. So, so I don't want this data to follow me into my PowerPoint. So this, let me show what I'm saying. So let's let assume we close this data set, we close this page. Let assume we close this. I want you to see what I'm trying to do so that I will not jump steps so that you all can understand what I'm trying to work on. So you will see that we are going to have a lot of tables, the one that are redundant that we are not going to use again. We've merged the table A, B, C, D, E into another table, which is one. So we don't need to take it into our data modeling. So that is why I'm, I'm concerned that we should not load it, but I want you to see it. the reason why we are not going to load it. 
So you can see that we have location A, B, C, D, E, and we are not going to use it. So we, are, we only need production, registration, and revenue. So in that sense, we are going to, I'm going to go back to my power, to my data query. Then I will show you how you can do similar stuff like that. If you don't want to lose on a particular data, if you don't want to do this, how you are, how you are going to do it? So go to location of location here, right click on it, then go to enable load. You will not check, you uncheck the enable load, leave all of that in the way it is. Then go to location B as well. Then you click this, go to location C, then you, you click this, yes. Then go to location D, yes, you click this. Then go to location E, you click this. Yeah, I think this is fine. So now we can see that we have we have done this. Then let's quickly go back to close and apply. So I want somebody to tell me what is different. What you can now see here. What has changed here? I want to I want to see comments from people. What do you see here? What has changed? Do you notice any so any if anything has changed? Let me see. Let me see people who are typing. Do you notice that the, the list of items that we have here has changed? It has changed from up to like six table. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You are all correct. You are all correct. You are all correct. Let me check so all that comment as well. Okay, let me send you guys a cup of, a, a cup of tea. Okay. So only product revenue appear. Yes, you are right. You are right. Now, thanks for the good one. Uh, okay. This I want to make an appeal. Okay. All right. All the core training video will be, will be good. We all going to have the we all our video on this part of the training will be on YouTube before the end of next week. So we are going to publish everything online. So we are all going to have it. So now that we have this, so the first thing you need to do. Based on what we are following, I hope you guys are not forgetting the step we are following. These are the step we are following. We are done now. We are done with. We are done with this. We have achieved this. We have achieved extraction. We have done transformation of our data. The next place we are going now, we are going to country of modeling. So now our our motor is driving into modeling. So modeling here is speaking to create how to create a relationship. So now I will be going back to how to create a relationship now. So you can all see it. So now we create this, but before we create a relationship, we need some additional table to support our analysis, which is going to be, which is going to be table. We need a, we need a date, a date table. I hope you, you all agree with me that we need a date table. That goes, but before we go to a date table, there is something we forget to do. Let me go back to the edit query. That is, and that is very important. We can see that this our this our data here. We did not change the data type that we have here. We need to change this data type. We need to change it so that it will not be affecting our data. Anything that we have as ID, we change it to test. We change all the all these all to test. We change it to test. And it's, so the quantity is correct. Unit value is correct. But we will change this to this. Let's change this to this. Let's see what it's going to give us. You see that it's giving us error. So now that's why we need to look for a way to format this data that we have. So one of the things that we are going to be doing now is that let's separate, let's, so this is what we need to do. Go to split column. You can right click and go to split column or you come to the, to the ribbon here and click as a split to column. So I will click by delimiter. So I'm going to do this by, so if you, so if you want to split a column, you look at the common thing that are there. I can split this column by space. I want to split this by space because space is one of the common things that we have on this. So I will split this by space. So let me split it by first delimiter. So we have this. So we have this now. So now I've split this, then let me do remove this, let me remove, remove this. Now you can see that this has now become a proper date. This has become a proper date. So now we can now go back into our analysis. Let's go back to our analysis. We now have our dates. So there is some other step I'll be skipping on today's class. So in the next class that we are going to be having, 
and we go into how you can do advanced calculation. So today I'm just going to run us through basic calculation. So because we don't have more time, I'll just run us through some basic calculation. So now the next thing we are going to be doing now is to create a, to create a data modeling. So data modeling is speaking to building relationship between your table. You can see that the the this data that we have here. This is it here. Let me pick it here. Let me zoom this. I want to I want to zoom in so that you all can see it. Okay. Let me let me bring them together. Okay. All right. Okay. Now let me now zoom it. So that we can all see it. I hope we can all see it now. So now I want to connect the revenue and product registration together. So how do you connect the data together? So look at the product table. We have product ID, product group, product line supply. And if you look at the revenue, invoice, product ID, and uh, every other thing is there. But the only thing that connects revenue table and product table together is only this product ID. Definitely, our relationship connection for product and revenue is going to be the product ID, which is what we are going to be doing. So now, where is our product ID here? We connect it with product ID here. So we can see that we've created the relationship. Another way to create a relationship is to come to manage relationship, which is at the top here. You can click manage relationship. You can use it to, to create a relationship. You can use it to create a relationship. Let me show you how to do it. You can see it, you click, if you click product ID, you click product ID here, then you click OK. So that is how you create relationship. So now that we are done with data, creating a relationship is talking about data modeling. So we are now done with that part. So the, ne the next part, the next part we are going to be, we are going now is that, let me show us the next part we are going. I hope we are all following. So the next part we are going now is this. We are now going into calculation. You can see this where we are coming now. We are now done with this stage of this analysis. We are coming into calculation. So now let's dive in into calculation. So first of all, for, let's look at table. Let's look at what are the things that we need to calculate. We have a voice, we have product ID, we have seller ID, we have unit value and dates. So we can change our dates table here. You can change it to something very small and that won't be disturbing us much. Let's look at one format that we can use here. Let's use this small, this small one. Uh -huh. So now we have this, we have quality and units. So we need to have our cost and revenue, our total revenue, or total revenue. So what, what are we going to do? We need to create additional column, create a new column. So the new column, what we are going to be doing is that there are some uh, material that we already share on the Google, uh, on the Google Classroom, but I will write this formula so that we all can have, uh, can you, we are going to extend this in our next class, how they teach on the formula, how they can be plugged into analysis. We are going to do extensive on that. So now, what I want to do is that, I want to say that for the product ID that we have, I want to multiply the, the unit cost. Okay, before I go there. So now let me let me let me discard this. If you call, I want to create a unit, if I want to create a cost, the cost is supposed to be the unit cost times revenue quantity. This is the revenue. Sorry, this, this is the quantity that we have. And if you come to product, product is this, this is the unit cost. So for me to get the cost, the total cost for this equipment, I need to multiply this unit cost in table of product into multiplied by the quantity in revenue. So now, since revenue is my fat table, the table that is larger than every other table, and it acts, uh, it is a unit table for the other table. So I need to now use calculation under my revenue table. So now I want to multiply the unit cost in products that are measured. So if you want to create a measure, a measure table, what you need to do is to come to enter here. So when you come to the enter, so you just click, just type, just type key, key, key measure, 
P measures here, right? Type P measure. So we are just going to be calculating just like three or four formulas is what we are going to be calculating. We are going to be calculating because of our time. We are going to be calculating the, the total cost. So what is our total cost? So come to this place, right click uh, this side there and come to new measure. So this is it, you, write, you type your total cost, it's called the sum of the revenue cost. Some of these revenue costs that we have here. Some of these revenue costs that we have at this table here. Some of the revenue costs is what we are, what we have put, what we have done there. So the next thing we are going to be calculating, let me delete this column one that is here. So I'm deleting this column one that we have here. Then I want to write another formula. We are going to be writing another formula. So create a new measure. So the new measure we are going to be calculating is going to be sum of revenue. So we are going to write the formula for our revenue. It's going to just going to be sum of revenue. It's very simple. Just the total sum of revenue. Then the next we are going to be calculating the margin profit. So margin is talking about what is the difference between the the revenue and the and the total cost. So that is what the margin is telling us. So margin is what we are going to be calculating now. So this is it. So we are going to be calculating the margin. So margin is for the total revenue minus total cost. So we click this. So now, what is that? So margin is speaking to profit in our other sense. So now we can still look at what is the percentage of our margin. You can look at that as well. So we can look at what is the percentage of our margin. So percentage of our margin can be calculated by this. Just type the formula for that is this is equals to divide. We type divide margin margin uh, total revenue tax by total revenue. Margin by total revenue, then every other thing should be zero. So if the zero here means that if there is a fine, instead of giving us a blank, a blank as an answer, so you can give us a zero as a value in any area that we actually. So now this is it. So we need to calculate. So reason why I have issue is that we need to calculate the, we need to calculate our cost, which means that the multiply this by this and also revenue. So it's supposed to be unit. The way we have issue before was that we're supposed to multiply this one, uh, this quantity that we have here, multiply by units that we have here, the cost here and here. So now, now that we have done that, so the next thing now is we are going into our visualization fully so that we that's what we are all being anticipated for. So what we need to do is that so the technique you need to use if you are creating visualization is this. So one of the things come to insert, you need to set up your space. How you want to you have a fission like now as I what I want to do now I already know I need three cards I need a card for margin cost and total revenue so what I need to do I can pick any of these then I just need to do it like this I can pick it like this I can pick it like this I can pick it like this I can just pick it like this so this is how you create your visualization pin, and I'll click it like this. I can click it like this. So this is how you create a visualization in dashboard. Uh, you create a card for a dashboard. I can do it like this. Do it like this. So I'll be very fast. I'll do it like then you can see put one here. You can put one here. Then let me create one here. Okay, so let me still create another one. I can do so. Let me have a spread one like this. I can have one like this. So you already don't let you don't let your visualization, you let the cluster with different to be too much visual. So it's simple way you are trying to work with. So, so this is what you do. So you, you ensure that they are equal. 
That's one of the things you need to ensure. You ensure that this is equal. Let me check this one here. Okay. So, so now with this, I can extend this one like this. I extend this one like this. So you can look at your general, check general, look at the one is the property. The length of this is 115 and 237. So you can use that, you can use this one to do it like that. 115 and this one is 115, 237. You can change this one to 237, 237. So we make it to be large on a glance. So I change this one to 237, 237. So you can see that there is still a lot of space that needs to be in. Okay, let me bring this one look like this. So what's the other thing I need to look into? Let me adjust this one like this. This is 294. Let me change this one to 294, 294. Let me change this one to 294 as well. 294. Uh -huh. I can see now that the card. Let me reduce it like this. Okay. has been done so what we need to do now is that we need to change our you need to work on color so let's work on that color so go to click this place go to shape then go to style let's change this color to something that we think we might like so let's look at which color can we use let's look at which color can we use let's look at us then pick different color. You can pick any of the color that you like. You can iterate any color. You can iterate any color that you like. So let me pick this color. Then let me change this, this color that we have here. Let me change it to anything that I like. I can change it to black. If I like, I can change it to black. So this one, I can change this one to any color that I like as well. Let me look at what color I can use for this one. Let me look for a color that I can like. So we can come here, you no, know, come to style, come to color, select any color that you like. So let me select this color. So now I want to repeat this color for the others. I can just click on format painter, click on this, click on this. So I have this color for this. So for this particular one, so I want, let me change the background of this. Let me change the color of this one to color of the background here. Let me change it. Click on the format page, come to this canvas background, then I can change the color to, let me look at what color I can use. Let me change it to this, then I can change it to this. What is this one doing here? I hope we are still together. So, okay, let me check, I'm going to say, okay. So this is what we have here now. So now we have this. So what I need to do now is that let me extend this one here. Okay. So the next thing I need to do now, you can change the rotate shape. You can change the shape width. Like I want to change the shape to, let me change this one to seven. Let me change it to, let me change a bit. So that it is 14. Why I change this one to seven? I change this one to seven. Seven. Let me, okay, let me change it out to. You can just look at it, depend on your description, like anything you like, but just do it for them. Let me change it on to a level, change this one to a level two. So I've, I've changed this one to a level. I can change this one to something like that too. I can change it to. A level to let me look at which figure can I change this one to? I can change this one to 
Let me change this one to six. Let me change this one to six. I can change this one to six two, to six. And this one to six. Then what the next thing you need to do here is that under this tie, under this tie, create a shadow. When you create a shadow, change the background of this one to white. You change the background of this one to white. So the shadow that we are creating, okay, we created the shadow for this. Come to general, come to effects. Let's look at, okay. Let's see. Yes, yes. Okay, here, this border that I'm looking for. We don't want to use border. We don't want to use border. So let me format this one with this. Uh -huh. You can see that our visualization is now giving us what we want. So I can create a shadow, click, click border, then click on this place, click on this place, click on this place. Then this one to come to this place, change shadow, close border. I can see that we are now having the positive vibe that we expect from the art. So So this is it here. This is it. This is it. This is it. This is it. You can, you can adjust this. You need to make sure you maintain the same equal space. You can now see. I hope we, we are liking what we are seeing. So now we have this. So the next thing we need to do, we've not formatted this. So let's quickly format this. So this particular one, I would like to change the shape of this one. I like to change the shape into fully rounded. Then I will still maintain the color that I use for this, for this one. I use the color that I use for this. But what I what need to be changed here is that I need to make it a fully rounded edge. Fully rounded edge. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. So now, now that we have this, so our work is done. So let's begin to put uh, the test. So let me write the test. Impact quotes four quotes four six dash dashboard quote four six dashboard. I build it. You can increase the size, the font size here. Let me use 40. Let me check how the 40 look. I can see that the 40 is too big. So, so I'm going to redu reduce it to maybe let me use 28. Then I begin to look at what other thing I need to do here. Okay, I need to change the color. Let me change the color to color to white. Then let me change the background, the effects. I will have the background to quote four. You can see that quote four say that but you can have the you can see that we have this now. So the next thing I need to do. So let me now begin to work on my analysis. So I want to use fitter. So I want to use fitter. So for my filter, let me drop my date as a filter here. So let me drop date here. So the date. Okay. I, I, it depends on how I want it to look. So I don't want it to be like this. I want it to be a drop down. I want it to be a drop down. So I will take the date. I will take it here. I will take it here. So I don't want this heading to be showing. This date heading, I don't want it to be showing. So slicer head, I will remove it. Then the next thing I to change this is too is too white. So I'm reducing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm reducing it like this. 
So now that I've reduced that, so what I need to do is that let me change the the normal settings, slice settings, then slice ahead. Uh, so value, let me format the value. So the value I want it to be white. Then okay, let me change. Value. The value should be white. Let's check what is it? What is this one saying? Background. Let's check okay, the background. Let's change the background to this. Let's change the background to this. Then let's change the value. Let's change the value to white. The value to white. So now this is what we see now. We have this. We have this date. So let's change the date format. The date format has not changed. Let's change the date format. Date format. Let's change the date format to something very small. You can see that the date format has changed. So the next thing is this. Let's plot this. So we are running up very soon. So now this, 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 this here. So let's drop our this table. Let's drop it here. And let's drop our total revenue. Let's drop it here. You can now have, then let's use this. You can now have this as we want. So you can put that as you like. So the next thing that we need to do here is this. Let's drop this one here. Let's drop this here. Let's drop this here. Then what we need to drop here, let's drop products. Okay, but before that, let's work on our card. Click on your card. Let's pick on our card. Let's drop our total revenue. Our total revenue. This is our total revenue. Then reduce the let's format it so that total revenue to call out number is too big. Let's change it to like 25. Let's change it to 28. 28. I think 26 will be better. 26. Then then let's use color, let's use color white. Let's use color white based on the place we have it. Let's use color white. So we are done, we've done the color. So the color, the label, let's use the label to let us use white and let's reduce this. Then the next thing we need to do is that let's close this, let's look at the event, let's turn off the background. Let's turn off the background. You can see that we have this now. They have this. So what we need to do is that go to total revenue, let's change it to dollar sign. Let's format it to dollar sign. So we have this. So what we need to do, let's just copy this. Let's copy it for the rest. Copy control C and control V to copy and paste. Then for the total revenue, we've done that. So let's drop our cost, our total cost. We drop our total cost. We drop our margin. Drop our margin. So the margin, I'm taking the margin to the percentage. Why taking the cost to be in dollar as well? Why taking the cost to be in dollar? So why taking the cost to be in dollar? So this is it here. So we have this here. So the next thing that we need to do is this place. So we want to look at our top product group. Let me go to my product group. So I have my product group here. Let me drop it here by total revenue. Let me look at my total revenue. So you can see the total revenue here. You can see that there are many. But what I need to do is that I can go to Fita, come to Fita here, come to product here, come to basic Fita. You can come to top, you can click on top five. 
So click on top five. So when you click on top five, let drop a feed here. So I want the, I want to see the top five. Click apply filter. So we can only see top five of these things now. This is what we are saying. This is what we are saying. You can only see you can only see the top five of these things. So what I need to do now is that I will need to format the data as well. Let me go to okay. Let me go to my y axis. I'm turning the type two off. My x and y, uh, y axis, x and y axis as I'm changing. Yes. So when this is done, I can turn off the label. So I can turn out the label. So this is it here. This is it here. So I'm turning off Y axis totally. So data label, the data bar. So let's look at what color that we can use for our data bar. So I'm thinking of a color to use. Let me see the color I can choose to use. I'm going to this color. Let me use this. Let me use this. Let me use this. So this is the color I'm using. Let me change the color of this one too. Uh, so we have this. We have. We have. Okay. Let me change this X and Y as it is. Let me turn this off. Yeah. So Y as it is too. Let me turn the. The Y axis too. Let me turn this one off. Okay. So since we have turned this one off, so we can change the. So let's check what, what are the other things we can do here. Data label. We can look at. Let's check here. Effect. We can look at the property. We can look at any other thing you want to change here. Let's see, grid line, marker, let me look at this, y axis, value, okay. Okay, so, so now what we what we need to do now is to work on the other data sets that we have here. So I can use this one to format this. Format and I click on format here. It should give me the same thing. But I don't want to use, I don't want to do that. So I will undo this. So what I need to do now is that I want to bring out my Let me bring this particular matrix table. I'll take my matrix table to be here. Hey. My matrix table. Okay, under my matrix table, what I need to do is that let me drop my supervisor. Where is supervisor? Where do you have supervisor then? Let me drop supervisor here as the as the okay let me change this to matrix so i've dropped my supervisor to my row i've dropped my supervisor to my row so what i need to do let me drop the seller to let me change this let me drop the seller Okay, seller. Okay, if you click on this now, you can now have the name of the seller. I have the name of the seller here. Okay. So now the next thing I need to do here is that let me drop the uh, the total revenue here. I drop the total revenue to value. I drop the revenue to value. I drop the total cost to value as well. So I will just need to go and format this now. That's what I just only need. Let me go to formats. So 
come to format value. This is where you format the value. But before that, you could have come to total cost. Change this to zero to zero. So you change this to zero. Come to total revenue here too. You change this one to zero to instead of being up. You see now that since we change it to zero, this has been formatted properly. This has been formatted properly. So the next thing we need to do now is that let's work on our other charts here. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. We are almost true. So let's pick this. So what are the things we want to look, want to look at here? So we want to let's drop our product line. Let's look at our product line. Let's drop it as a legend. And let's drop the total margin. Let, let's drop our margin here. So what I'm trying to do here is that this particular card that we have here, it will be speaking about margin. Why this aspect here will be talking about revenue and total cost. So that, that is so whenever anybody is looking at the dashboard, it will not be closely together. So they can see that this place is talking to margin, is talking to the margin of it. So let me let me pick this. Let me borrow this in this chart here. Let me borrow this chart here. Let me borrow it here. So you can, you can see this one like this. You can see this one like this. So now what we have here. So this place, what are we doing here is going to be top products by group by margin. So top products by margin. So top products. So products group. Product group by margin. Product group by margin. I can drop the margin here. So so I remove I remove revenue. I can see it here, top group by margin. So don't let me use percentage, let me use margin, the one that we have here. Let me drop this one here. Top group by margin. Then this one, let me use a uh, margin by seller. Let's say we use, let's say we use this one, we use seller on this, on the X axis, on the axis here, let's drop our seller here. Head of our seller, where are you going to come here? These are seller, then the, let me remove the revenue, then let me drop supervisor. Want to see each seller on our supervisor, what did they do? We drop the supervisor here, then we drop our profit margin. We drop our profit margin. We drop it at the value. So now for this, for, for this one, we are going to be looking at what is the top products. Top product is what we are going to be looking at. Top five products. So top five products by margin is what we are working with. So we click apply. So now what I need to do now is that I need to I need to format this. I need to format this. Let me use the same format painter that I use there. Okay. It's like we haven't formatted any of this before. So what I, need, what I need to do is that let me let me go to first of all go to the data bar, change the color of this to something I can relate to. Change this one to give this one as there. Then let me change the background. Let's look for where we have background effects. Turn up background. Then what we need to do now is that let's go and change the all the X and Y axis. Let's change the color to white. Uh -huh. So that uh, let me go and look for the data label. Change it to white as well. Data label. Data label. Data label. Where is that a label running to? Applying to all.
Also. Right. So now the next thing is the is the heading. Where do we have title? Title. We change the title to margin by sell uh, top five products. Top five products. Product group. Top five product group by margin. Top five product group. Top five product group by margin. So what we need to do? Let's just change this one to white directly. So we can have this. Let's check if this one can help us format this one too. Uh -huh. So what we need to do now here is this. So we need to use the same concept that we have been using over there. So the legend, we need to come to legend. I change the legend color, the test, click test. The new Power BI, uh, it is is actually something that we need to iterate at times so that we can get what we are looking for very fast. So this is it here. Uh, so margin by seller and by margin by seller and supervisor is this. So let's be, okay. Let's format this one too. So let me check what we have here. The background. Let me open the background. Then the test that we have. I'm very sure it's going to be white. So. Let me have the legend for this. Let me have the legend. So what we need to do here is that let me close the slice. The slice is okay. The slice is okay, but data label is where we are having the data label outside all detail. So we need to find a way to change the color to white. So then we need to change the heading. Sorry, the title. We need to change the title as well. So the title, we need to change it to something like white so that people can see it visibly. So we have this, we have that too. So what we need to do here, let's come to this place too. Let's format this. Uh, what we need to do here is this. Come to visual. Come to value. But for value, let's work on the style present. Then use no. You use no to not. Then let's come to border, events, background. Then remove background. If you remove background from it, then the next thing we need to do is to now go back to visual. Let's check our column heading. Let's use single bold for our heading. We can increase the font so that. This will look more uh, catchy to people that are looking at it. So the next thing we need to do, let's format our value. Because we can we'll come back to this place. Come to supervisor. Sorry. Come to file revenue. Come to conditional formats. Then come to bar. When you come to bar. Then you choose the color you want to use. So we are working on which one are you working on? Total revenue. So let me use the same color. I mean, let me use color for this. Let me use this color for total revenue. Let me use this color. So for the cost, I'm going to go to conditional format bar as well. So I'm going to use uh let me which color should I use? Let me use something like for this one okay so we have this here so the only thing that we need to format is this so let's go and look for where we have the the assets this particular color for this right line not they're looking for where we have the color for this okay value to okay slide that uh, okay so 
So, so the next thing we can do now, we already have our dashboard, but if we want to create a button, so the button is very simple. Okay, this one is having, let's remove border here. Let's remove border from this slicer. Border. So we don't need to use border for this. So I think we are fine with this. So, so what we need to do, if we want to create a, come to insert, insert here, you can create different, you can pick any of these things to create a, a, a button. You can use this thing to create a button. You can use it to create a button, just drop it here. You can use it to create a button. Then if you create a, you can click style. You can click shadow. If you click shadow, you can change the color to anything you like. You can change it. Then you can, you can close the border for it. So if you want to pick another one too, you can come to shape. You can click, maybe you pick this one. So instead of going to go and be getting ribbon here and there, you can, you can, uh, this one is just like, and do this. You can do this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me check this one. Let me check the shape of this one. We have properties to be at 636. Then you can use that to do this one too. 36. 36. So after 36, 36, then what we need to do is just to remove border and create shadow. You can see now that that's, that's become very small. So you can create a shape again. Which shape do you want to create? You can pick any one you like again. Then let's change it to 36, 36 directly. 36, 36, then. Let's create a style for it. Let's check this. And let's check this. Then we, we can take it to something like this. So we already have all our buttons. We already have all our buttons that we need for our, to finalize our visualization. So what we just need to do, the next thing that is unique for us, uh, let's assume you want to pick a logo. You can go to your image. You can go and look for any logo you want to use. Let me look for one logo here. Okay, let me look. Let me pick this logo. You can pick any logo and drop the logo here. But if you notice, this logo is going to be black. It's going to be showing black here. So what I need to do is that I will go and create any shape. I create a shape. Let me create a shape. I use it like this. I use it like this. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to cut this, change this shape here, take this shape. I'm going to take this shape to this place. So I can see that this shape is not, I don't like the way I have it. So I can change it to be a rectangle so that it won't be disturbing me. So now, so this particular shape, let me change the color to white. I can change this color, change the color of this to white. So I can see now that I've changed it to white. So I can have my, I can have my logo being showcasing here. I can have my logo showcasing here like this. Then let's assume now, you want to create you want to create the second the if you remember if you remember this we i show you this and i show you this so if you want to create something like this this is what you need to do this is how you do it so this is it here you click the composition tree they call this the composition tree 
So the composition tree help you to give detail to your to your fish right? like how how are the seeds, how are the channel of the seeds, how did it go? So that is what this uh, the commission tree is going to give us. So I'll be showing us how to do that shortly now. Okay. So what I need what I need to do for, for this conversion tree is that you see this analyze, drop your total revenue on analyze. When you drop it on analyze, you see that you show the total revenue. So the next thing I'm going to do is that I will drop my product line. So what how, how is the sales be? How is the sales being explained by product line? How is my sorry, how is my total revenue being explained by, by product line? How is it being explained by supply, by supplier? How is it being explained by supervisor? By how the supervisor, how, how is the total revenue coming in of the supervisor? Then the next thing I can still look at, I can still look at my seller as well. I can drop seller here. I can swear if we drop group, uh, product group. I can drop product group here. So what you need to do, you can see a button here. You can click high value. Immediately you are clicking it to be generating. Let me say high value. You can see it. You can see the way it's going. You can see the way it's going. High value. You can see the way everything is going. You can see it. Let me drop this one here too. I value. You can see. You can see that we have this already. So I can take this. You can change color of this one as well if you like. Analyze analysis. Or tree, or your tree bar, your data bar here. So this is the bar you are seeing there. You can change it to anything you like. Let us zoom. I want to change it to this, and I want to change this one to to this. I can leave like. Then you can cut it. Let's say you don't. Let's say let let us zoom. You don't need this way. Then once we do our last visual, then come to this place. We want to use our. Influence. I want to look at look at how has our sales been influenced. What influence our sales? Yeah, 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 somebody is somebody is need to be muted there. Go. Go to the bed. Okay. So now for the influencer here. What we can do on influenza is like, okay, we want to look at how is the sales, who influenced the sales based on comparison. So we can drop, we can drop our total revenue here to, to know who actually influenced the sales. But drop it by the, I, I can drop it here. So explain by, to this explain by as well. So explain by here, yeah, I'll just drop them. Explain by, we can drop, drop dates. So, how, how, how do you say happen by date? You can look at the date. Hey, look at date. You can look at date. Look at date. See now it's showing date. So you can still look at okay. Which, which seller buy the product for that particular day? Where is it? Let's look for our seller table. Then you can look at seller. You can compare with so many things. So supplier, you can look, let's look at supplier. Let's look at the supervisor. Let's look at the product line. Then let's look at the product group. Let's look at the product group. So you can see that different, different thing. So it's, it's going to, so this intelligence, this, uh, this business intelligence to Power BI will be giving you interpretation of what is happening with your data. You can, look, you can see it here. It has been that the total revenue is more likely to increase when supply is made too broader than otherwise. So you already, if you click on this one, it will tell you what influence product group. It will tell you by date. It will tell you by seller. So this is one of the key, key, key influencer segment that can be helpful. So now what we, need, what we are going to do now is that I'm going to consolidate it together. I'm going to round up here. So, let me consolidate this together. Let me put it here. Let me put this here. Let me put this. Let me put it here. Yeah. 
Sorry. Just a seconds. Sorry, I'm back. Okay, so if I take this one here, all right. Let's say we take this one, we take it here. We format it like this, we format it like this. We can format this as well. We can format this visual. We can format this by, uh, let's say, let me just generate effects. Let me just change the value. Let me just change only the start shadow because we are fine. Let me do only this. So the next thing here, so let me take this one too. So I just want to show you these tricks. Is going to that is one of the things that can help you most in your five BI journey. Like you don't want to use too much, too much sheets to be explaining your favorite. You can just do it like this. You can do it like this. So then. Okay. Come to book, come to view, come to bookmark. Then come to bookmark, create a bookmark, create a three bookmark. Let me delete this one that I've been here. So we have this bookmark. So for this book one, bookmark one, let's call it reset. So if you want to research your official, it's for the bookmark one. So if you want to look at key influencer, it's for the bookmark two, key influencers it's for the bookmark two. If you want to look at the, the composition tree, the composition the composition. You want to look at your decomposition tree, this one. So now let's go to the reset, which will be the first one. So when you click on reset, but for that, click on selection. So this selection, let me close this other one here. We are not using this other thing here. We are not using this one. So now if you click on reset, we are on the reset currently now. So you, you come to this place, you come to the key influencer. I don't want, when I click reset, I don't want to see key influencer, I don't want to see the code. When I'm on set, then you click on this three button, you hold this. I want the data to reset, so I click on this. So that one has been done. So when I'm on the, on the key influencer, I don't want to see the composition. I want to be seeing this. So I'll come to this now. I don't want to see to affect my data. Then I click on this. When I'm, when I'm on to the composition, the composition, I don't want to see key influencer. I think I don't want it to affect my data. So what I need to do, I click on this. So now, the, the last thing you need to do now is to come to this. Let me close this one now. Let me now open this. Let's do this data. Let's do this too. So when you come to this, this particular box here, yeah, I want to set an action that whenever I click this action, it should be giving me a reset. So I can come to Tutsi, say reset this page, reset page. So when I come to this place, come, when I, whenever I click this button, this, uh, the action I'm expecting is that it should the bookmark name, the composition, let's say I want, the corporation to, 
to be the button that will be showing view the composition tree. View the composition tree. So whenever I click this third button here, so what I want to be seeing is that let me do checklist here. What I want to be seeing is this. I want to be seeing the bookmark having a key influencer. So my tools is now view the influencers. View key influencers. So this is what I'll be seeing. So now I can delete these other sheets there. I can delete them. I'm not using them again. So you can name these all reports. So now, so now we have our report now. So we'll be looking at this. Maybe I click this. You see it now. Maybe you click this. So this one is not working. So we need to go back to this. So let me show my bookmark. Um, and so now let's check this. Let's check this one. It's working. It's working. This one is working. So then maybe it is this button that is not working. So I need to come and check it. Why is it not working? So okay, it's working it's because the the system was slow. That is why. So this one is the composition bookmark, the composition. So so this one is working. The browser. So this one is giving us. In giving us attitudes, or if you never mind, that attitude will be there to check it. So I can use this, I can use the person to provide it up. So you perform this action for me, click on this bookmark, come to the composition tree. So, so results means so right here you can now see that it's working. You can now see that all the three buttons is now working. So now that we have confirmed that all our three buttons working. So another thing we can see do is that we can import we can import icon. There is a document, let me look for icon. We can look for icon. We can import icon. Import icon, import icon, and drop it and use icon at the front of your picture. And beautify your work. You can, you can import icon. Let's say, for import this, for import this to. I drop this there. Uh, the last one, you can import this one. So you can download all of these online. Just click any icon on your website, just put it online. You can drop it there. You can drop it there. So, so this is how to. So let me click reset so that we have our page. So we have our page like this. So I hope you will find this very interesting so far. So I would like to take comments if you have any comments. Let me check if you have anybody with comments. I don't know if you have any comments on what we have done so far. Okay. 
So, so when you are done, so the next thing is just to publish your work. So go to publish. Then you can go to click on. First of all, you need to save your work. So when you save your work, you create a workspace. Look for look for a workspace. Then you publish it. So this is it here. So I know it's a lot of work. You might need to, to practice as you said. So let's let's see the work that we've done. So let's so whenever you publish, you click this link, it will take you to it takes you to you need to sign it to have power bi license so that you can sign it so you need to have organization email for you to try to sign it so when this is done you can see it you have it here then you can come to file come to embed publish to web click publish to web you can see the you can copy the link go to your url and you can paste it You can see what we have done. This is what we have done today. So let me take the link to the chat here. So I'll drop the link of what we have done to this place. So if you have any question, you can always drop it to the to your course, uh, to, your, to your course class. And also, I will also emphasize that we already published our Power BI challenge for the for this. Uh, for this year. So what the data we are all going to be working on is on financial inclusion. So the link to read more about the challenge and share it on the group chat. So there are going to be a lot of a lot of prices for the people that are going to do very well here. So I've shared the link to the chat so that you guys you guys will practice with it. So you can download the data and then read through the submission procedure. So it's very simple. And if you have any question. You can always send a mail to this uh, email, project participation and data sign in here. So they are, they are all, if you are available to respond to any of your queries, you can the part there uh, challenge. So I don't know if you have any questions. Uh, we are going to be rounding up in less than we have less than 30 minutes more. You can move it or you can type it on the on the chat. Hello, uh, okay. Well, why can you hear me? Why? Okay, the recorded video will be shared. So we can see the published data. The published data, you can see. So this particular feature is not working online because it's not yet having an extension online. But you can see from field offline. But other, other features are working very well. So we feel this other feature here is only working on the Power BI premises. It's not working on web. Not working on web. But this one is working very well here. You can see that it's working on the Power BI server. It's working on Power BI. I don't think this one will work here. You can see that all of them are working on Power BI server. So what is being published online is limited to some functionality. So that is why some of the external people cannot see it. That is why. But if you are on the Power BI portal premises, they are all working very fine. So uh, I'll be looking forward to When you are claiming the data, how does one know that data has to remove from the previous parameter? Okay, you know the data you need to remove because you know what you want to do, and you know the data that is not going to work for you. Let's assume 
you have a data that is talking about male, female, having gender. When you have a data that is talking about gender, and under the column, you see somebody, something like uh, GJ, uh, you see a name under instead of male and female, or you see the name of a location inside the gender, male and female. But maybe you need to remove that particular rule from your data, and also the column. When you realize that the column is not useful, you are not going to use it. Let us assume that you are, you are looking for not only the column you can remove, but the one that is not used is one that you know that you are not going to use it in your analysis. The reason for removing that is because it reduces the, the, the load on your, on, your, on your system so that you will not be having too uh, larger size. So that is the importance of that. I hope okay, I got it that. So any data that is not useful, it's not all the data you can remove. You, just, you, will be, you will be normally remove when there's a lot of data and you need to really be able to see the, the one you are working with. You can just remove other one that you are not using. And probably I can help you to bring them back whenever you need them again. All right. So thank you so much, everyone. So the link to help to, to join the Google Classroom has been shared and every other details. So so we're looking forward to seeing you next uh, next two weeks Friday when we are going to round up uh, this uh, practice we are working. We're going to working on another data set and going to be more on calculation and data model. So see you all. Thank you for joining the call and have a great night's rest. Bye bye.